Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh. Welcome to Adam vs. the Man featuring Samantha, Morgan, Miller, Carnaguchi Kokesh, and myself, Adam Kokesh. We are in a Walmart parking lot here in Flagstaff, Arizona, not far from where we live in Juniper Wood Ranch. There it is, you can see Walmart in the age of the apocalypse, in the age of coronaphobia. So we've got a, a lot of headlines to cover today, of course. We've got a few updates. Want to tell you about that top link that you're seeing wherever it is in the description there, the soberstick.com. Yesterday, for a bonus live show, we did my coronavirus test live on Facebook, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I I, tur I tested completely negative. It turns out, uh, which is not the ideal outcome. Uh, although I, some people, who knows? Time will tell. Perhaps that is uh, the ideal outcome. I was hoping for was to be positive for antibodies and not the active virus and the test that I was able to get and big shout out to Jacob Clark with the Kentucky Libertarian Party for getting a hold of these these are not FDA FDA approved yet uh, but they are about to be apparently within the next 48 hours and that website there the soberstick.com write that down bookmark that pull that tab open whatever it is because they are going to be having those available for sale within uh, 48 hours from yesterday so hopefully within 24 hours now they may be available now but just getting plugged in with this and and uh, putting making clear the demand for this and it's a very easy uh, test to administer at home you do have to prick your finger uh, like w uh, before you donate blood you know when they test you for your iron uh, but it, it, it's it's no big deal very easy to do at home and you have the results in five minutes uh, ten minutes tops to make sure so it's uh, it's it's a really cool test everybody should be uh, able to get these in the mail it really one of the things this exposes is how much government has made shit worse and if we want it to not happen again and people to die unnecessarily from whatever real uh, although much smaller than what they're saying uh, health risk this thing represents um, and I, I, I do believe after talking to Dr. Mary Ruert on Monday and I highly advise everyone uh, if you want a sense of, of what this thing represents go check out that interview from Monday with Dr. Mary Ruert. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, from what it looks like from the numbers we have today, uh, you know, it is a quirky off season flu that is going to be part of the human petri dish from now on and something that we're going to be able to manage and we're going to have a grip on very soon. And it's not a big deal. Dr. Mary Ruert is 70. She goes out like she normally would. She just wears a mask and uses hand sanitizer consistently and considers herself to be pretty safe you know almost as good as staying home entirely so the idea of, of uh, you know changing our physical distancing and hygiene patterns is entirely appropriate and can be done without any government whatsoever and it's done by raising the standard of social awareness in businesses like here in Walmart they're not requiring you to wear a mask um, we'll tell we'll come back and tell you about all of our, our little retail stories today but uh, what else? So for announcements, so we have uh, we have a lot come, going on with uh, Big Igloo Geodesics, development of our new business back at the Garden of Freedom. Really excited about that. Sneak preview just for people who are watching these videos. You can go to bigigloo.biz, and that'll take you to our Facebook page, and you can look up Big Igloo Geodesics on uh, Instagram as well. That's all we're doing for this business, for online presence organization for now. But if anybody wants to custom order a dome uh, or a geodesic dome frame, we have the equipment that we got from Ernie Hancock, freedomsphoenix.com, another great news aggregator website uh, with, with, with a very libertarian perspective. I highly recommend everybody check that out. And if it's appropriate for you and getting news, sign up for their email Excuse me, they have a daily uh, News Digest email alert that's a really good uh, aggregation of headlines. And we have uh, what was Ernie's dome making equipment, the stamp press and the special chop saw uh, to make uh, struts for geodesic domes. And happy to make custom kits for anybody. And you can see from some of the photos already up on our uh, Facebook page for Big Igloo Geodesics some of the domes that we've built that we've got set up at the Garden of Freedom already and basically anything that you want anything you can imagine I know how to do all the calculations and uh, you know create more complex domes even I can come and assemble them on site for you or um, 
uh, send me mail you a kit if you like with very easy to follow instructions for how to put one together we're in the process of uh, a few exciting projects within the next big one uh, is a, a geodesic wallapini I guess is what we're calling it a geodesic wallapini wallapini is a buried greenhouse uh, and we're doing one with a, a geodesic dome roof structure so um, for my health update, if you see me sitting funny in the car here trying to lean into the shot, it's because we figured out what's what's fucking wrong with me. Um, I, I have uh, some kind of piliformis, piriformis uh, syndrome disorder, inflammation from a strained muscle, uh, which is the, the, the muscle that connects your tailbone to your hip bone. And... This is this is like the dumbest. This is this is my coronaphobia injury, <laughs> like from and I. It's, this is really dumb. But we actually thought the first time I was getting this this particular back soreness that it was it was from like flu joint achiness, and it wasn't even that. It was it was a muscle strain from uh, doing leg press and then not working out for a while, and then on the hard bench on the RV where I've been doing interviews and doing doing the live show from in there, sitting there and slouching to get in frame. This is, see how dumb this is? This is really dumb. And I'm really glad I'm finally learning this lesson about my body at age 38 that if I fuck with it like this, if I grind this butt muscle of mine into a hardwood bench for hours every day to bring you the message of freedom uh, that I'm, I'm going to be paying the price for it. And it was that and, and a lot of stress driving over the last couple of weeks. And then going to Ernie's house and, and loading up a lot of heavy equipment, moving some heavy furniture and uh, just, just putting that extra strain on the muscle. So it's like I've got this inflammation where this muscle in my hip and under my buttocks goes up into my tailbone. And I went to the chiropractor today, got adjusted, felt a lot better to release that overall tension around it. But I've still got this strain, sprain, inflammation injury in that muscle that's hitting my sciatic nerve. And so I'm, I'm basically gonna be on, on, on partial bed rest and it's it, for the next next couple days. It's not actually bed rest. It's more like laying, stain, stain vertical, stain linear rest. Vertical rest. Yeah, I can stand. Standing is okay. Lying down is okay. Sitting is bad. So I'm gonna be doing the show from the rocking chair, or maybe for maybe we'll do the next maybe we'll do the next couple shows from in bed in in No yeah. Force One. The bed. We'll have a bed in. It'll be nice. like John Lennon and, like and Yoko Chris Ono. Cole, Chris Cole goes geodesic butt pillow. Geodesic, oh, yeah, no, it's, and it's not my butt, it's like the very lowest part of my back where the butt muscles connect to the pelvis. It's really dumb. It's a really I've fucking stupid injury. I've been trying to get injury. you to sit on a donut. If I had, if I had been stretching, and, and, and it's just that I, because gyms were closed, I feel really dumb. Like, because gyms were closed, I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't working out enough on my own. I mean, I was staying physically active. I also ate like a pig for two weeks. Is the coronaphobia stress. Yeah. Anyway, uh, is that it for announcements, dear? Well, before we, we get to, 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 do you want to get to comments and then and then we'll tell our stories and then do headlines? Okay. So, any 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 comments that you've seen that you wanted? Anything else that you want to share other than Chris jumping in here? Aww. My girlfriend Brittany, who's out in Italy right now, actually was saying hi to us. Just wanted to pop and say hi. Hi, honey. I miss you. Hi, Italy. Stay safe. Brittany, not Italy. You, did you say she's in Italy? She's in Italy, but yeah. say hi to Brittany. Okay, hi Brittany in Italy. I miss you, sweetheart. Stay safe. Um, Daniel Dean says, did you see the video of the drone flying over New York City reminding us to socially distance? No, missed that one. I haven't seen that one two, either. Two recent must-see, though, viral videos uh, around, well... There's there a handful, but uh, the the guy getting arrested paddleboarding in Southern California. I know. Uh, the woman getting uh, arrested jogging, jogging in Florida. In Florida. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna see more. I mean, there, there's got to be a bunch out there. If anybody wants to share, like comment here. I know uh, there are a lot of other viral videos going around. I don't have time to watch them all. At some point, it's like bad cop porn, where you're just like, yeah, I'm done. I I get it. Cops are being stupid. Uh, what, what, what was the other one? The other, maybe we'll get to it with the headlines, but there have been a few other like, and, and, and these aren't, these are, these are actually worth watching. This is not, this is like, I, I, I came to a point in my awakening as an activist where 
I was watching all the bad cop videos. And for me, there was a part of it where it was learning what's the actual reality in these stressful situations dealing with cops. What's a better way to deal with cops, learning a better way to resist, uh, you know, uh, undue police and infringement on your rights and all of that. But uh, th there got to a point with me where it was like porn, where you're just watching it like uh, and there's, you're not learning anything. It's just and like there, there are websites where there are people who, who watch like and they know every like viral a police abuse video and stay up on that. And at one point I had to identify it as bad cop porn and just sort of check out from that. But right now it, it's worth paying attention to these kinds of videos because this is how law enforcement relationships are changing right now, and we need to understand that. So if anybody wants to point out in the comments, uh, Sam's going to be watching the whole show today, uh, what, you, what other critical police interactions you think people should know about. And by the way, please share this video if you're watching right now. If you think this is important, not just because it's me with my message of freedom and, and everything that we're doing, living off grid, living better, living by libertarian values at the Garden of Freedom and everything we're doing with Adam versus the man and Big Igloo Geodesics, but that we're having a reasonable conversation based not just on libertarian principles, but an intellectual sense of open-mindedness and hosting a conversation, yeah, thank you for all the thumbs up, hosting conversation with all of you where your input is welcome in this and being able to put a check on me and, and, and being questioned. Like I said, eventually, we put the Patreon link up there. If we get enough money in Patreon and we can hire a producer full time, we'll go back to doing the full production two hour live show where we're doing actual live uh, callers and reading emails and, 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 ha and, and really enhancing that audience interaction. But for now, this, this is great, you know, Facebook Live, and we really appreciate everybody who comments and, and is part of this uh, Freedom Family conversation. So anything else you want to bring in here, baby, before uh, we get Chris to our stories? Chris uh, story earlier about a former cop getting arrested for playing catch with oh, his daughter in the park. Yep, there's another good data point. Former cop. Where, where was that one? Mm, a couple people sent me that one this morning. Yeah, let me go back. Yeah, so it was a cop playing, a former cop playing catch with his daughter in a park, approached by police who were telling people this is this area is closed, get out of the park. And he just put up a little verbal resistance and was like, we're practicing social distancing and we are uh, you know, not in violation of any orders. And, he, and they threatened to arrest him in front of his six-year-old daughter and, and then they did. And it, it's just, you know, I, I, right now these are outliers, but if this becomes the norm, that's what we're looking out for. You know, on the on the the curve, the flatten the curve, the curve of tyranny. How high are, is it getting? I think it's t tapering off. I think there's going to be a flattening. I don't think, like what we're seeing here is isolated incidents right now of these, like the paddle boarding, the arrested for jogging, uh, the guy. Oh, there was a guy uh, ordered to wear an ankle bracelet. Right, there have been a few cases of that, not by widespread policy yet, by individual cases with judges' orders, and that's some scary shit. That that's. That's some serious shit that, that they have scared people bad enough into accepting that kind of law enforcement. But I think they, when this happens, at least today in America, if they want an, or, or, or the incentive for them is to get those kinds of policies more widespread, they're going to test the waters first. And so it is it is worth making noise about this. It is worth following how this is developing, even if you're able, like we are, to pretty much isolate ourselves. Where, you know, We go in and out of town. We do our retail stuff. And, you know, for now, that's all we're allowed to do. Like, we don't get to go tour for political events. Uh, you know, we're, we're fine other than that. But, you know, if you're in a more difficult situation, you know, really uh, do bear in mind that I would say cops are somewhere in the range of five to ten times more dangerous. Because not only are they given this, uh, you know, permission to arrest people for inane shit, you know, this is... You know, it's not martial law when it's not done by the military, technically. But now that we do also have national, and this is this is one of our our top headlines we're going to get into today, of course, National Guard troops enforcing uh, movement restrictions, and 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 that is that is uh, definitely crossing a line into martial law. Uh, you know, I, I would still say, you know, that with the police state that we have, the militarization of police the backing of the military. We, we were at a partial martial law before coronavirus at all started. And it's very subjective. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but you know, I would want to, I would identify it as that in order to recognize the evil of it. 
And what we've seen is a significant ratcheting up of that with the national state of emergency and various state and local declarations of emergency giving police officers arbitrary arrest powers. And, and to me, that, that is a critical component of martial law. When they have the direct backing of the National Guard, I can, I, I think we, we're, we're, you draw lines wherever you want, but we've crossed a lot of significant dangerous lines lately. And some of these, these individual data points are really important to seeing it go that way. I don't want to, I don't want to be cherry picking and, and fear mongering and saying, but we do need to be keeping track of this. We do need to be looking for ways to fight back. Um, Matthew Claxton says they escorted a nurse in Fort Smith, Arkansas, because it was making everyone panic. She was wearing scrubs while fill, scrubs while filling up for gas. <sighs> yeah, there's a few more. Ooh, yeah, yeah, and and I, I do want to mention a couple things. Chris Cole has been sharing that are in that uh, that category of data points. Oh, phone is getting warm. It's in the uh, sunlight here. Let's, let's let's crack this other window. Or I can just here. move the truck. No, no, we'll just open the window. It'll be fine. Uh, I know. I, I'll turn turn the brightness down on the screen. I had that so I could read the comments. Oh, it's all the way up. That's why okay. we don't have to look at ourselves in full no. brightness. I think no. we can. I know what yeah. I look like. I don't. Yeah. yeah, we'll be fine. And we'll get through. We'll, we've got enough battery to get through this. But yeah. So what were, were the other data points? Chris Cole was sharing about uh, victims of family law. Chris Cole is you know one of our most active coalition organizers really excited that victims for fam victims of family law for Kokesh is a thing and uh, in, in particular what he is drawing attention now to is how this particularly disgusting cluster of injustices are uh, have, have made us vulnerable in, in such a, uh, a disgusting way that where the martial law, the state of emergency, everything around the virus drying out is making a lot worse. And one of the most disgusting things is seeing uh, children being denied access to their parents because the parent has some exposure to the coronavirus or to the general, the general public. And this is uh, especially hitting the healthcare community in, in a significant way. And I don't want to you know, again, fear monger, blow this up. Uh, but for people making child support payments uh, and having, you know, wages garnished or having wages disappear, if they're in the service industry, how many service industry people were paying child support? Just factor that into the whole mess. And, you know, things that we're going to be untangling and recovering from for, uh, you know, for years, at, at very least, even if we have... The, the, the mythological V-shaped recovery of the market in general or the stock market, and they might be able to, you know, with bailouts, reinflate the bubble of the stock market and, and real estate. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to do it with real estate. I think real estate, uh, that bubble, I, I'm, I, this is off the top of my head opinion, don't, you know, take it for what it's worth, but the, you know, the, the stock market is is inherently a bubble of overvaluation of economic resources that that's part of how it's set up by uh, all of the relevant interests all of the profiteers off this system and the uh, you know a ability to inflate prices of stocks through manipulation of markets is is just part of how they take advantage of everybody else i think they might be able to to manufacture a v-shaped recovery in some of those more superficial market uh, uh, factors like the stock market, um, you know, obviously with manipulations from the Federal Reserve, lowering of interest rates, flooding the market with capital, uh, you know, quantitative easing, things like that. But there are certain unavoidable consequences of just this period of unemployment that we're experiencing. That there's really nothing you can do except, I, and I know, as a sort of you know INTJ nerd who wants to go, there's, but of course there's got to be a way we could just come out of this, and everybody goes back, and, and it's like yeah, but we don't have the mechanisms of accounting for everything that's already gotten screwed up to be unscrewed in, in a way other than sort of letting things get back to normal. And I'm, I, I do think that that, in, in a lot of ways, is going to take several years. Just thinking about the, the, the victims of family law implications as one data set where we see 
something that we know is going to have consequences for many years. Obviously, a lot of the healthcare stuff and getting to getting ahead, I guess, to our personal stories. Like today, we went to the VA after uh, going to the chiropractor to see if if we could get some uh, anti-inflammatory or pain meds for myself for uh, my piriformis issue, and they had a nurse uh, waiting. A uh, great dude, former corpsman, actually, yeah. waiting inside the uh, the glass door. And we weren't even paying attention. We just parked closest and walked towards it. And he came out and, like, stopped us almost. I mean, didn't, he didn't even have to stop because we knew right. that, like, why he's coming out. And, and he, he was wearing sort of casual scrubs. Like, they, they might not have been scrubs, right? Like, all yeah. of dry. It was, and normal shoes yeah. and no other protective gear. He but, kept his distance, but he was yeah. really cool about it. No, no, he was great. Yeah. Uh, this is, but one of the things he pointed out was that you know he's seen about a dozen patients a day. Uh, the, the traffic is so low at this, and this is uh, the the VA not outpatient, but like outpost facility. It's not one of the main actual. The main VA hospital near here is in, in Prescott, uh, whereas we're in Flagstaff, an hour north to our place, and an hour east to Flagstaff from Prescott. And he said, you know, the traffic is really low, but he draws samples. Uh, so like blood tests and urine tests and things like that. And in our case, it was like, you know, well, you can handle me at the window. They, they weren't able to help me with any medication there uh, anyway, uh, except by prescription. And I only needed a, and need something serious for like the next two days. You know, I probably should go and get some medication anyway, just to use this as an excuse to stock up. But anytime I can get, you know, I can call, I'll probably call the VA anyway. That's what he says, that if I wanted meds through the VA, call my primary care in uh, Prescott and they would either they would digitally give me a prescription I could go and pick it up at a, at a pharmacy and uh, or get it by mail I'll probably just go to get it by mail and get stock up on all my other meds as well that I, I should have been ordering ahead anyway I'm a bad prepper I got the big things down I got a, I got an off-grid homestead where we can live comfortably and definitely if we have to We've got uh, we've got off grid water for a long time if we if we need it, and uh, emergency food supplies, and we can hunt rabbit if we and live off the land if we, we absolutely have to, but also several uh, you know off grid businesses, and uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Any other comments before we get into the rest of our stories? Um, none that are really too relevant. Some that I that are just very sweet. Thank you guys for saying hi and that you love us and miss us. All right, so Sam, what was it like going in to get your Starbucks at Safeway this morning in Williams, Arizona? This was halfway from our place to Flagstaff. So, when you go into the grocery stores now, they shut down one door. The Safeway in Williams on our way out here... Um, shut down one of their doors so it's entrance and exit only and they set up cones to create these lanes to let you go in and they're sanitizing off carts to give to you and then each aisle has arrows pointing you like only one aisle you can go up one way aisles yeah and then there's one way like you have to follow these lanes and they have stickers where your feet can go to show how distant you need to be with the next person and there was a woman out front when you went there right yeah and she's like you already know because i just immediately went through the cones i was like yeah they and you were wearing your bandana yeah and they did the same thing at home depot in phoenix now you said everybody thanked you there yeah for where all the staff said thank you for wearing a bandana. Yeah. Okay. And the woman out front, she wasn't wearing any protective mm -hmm. gear. None at of all, the workers were wearing protective gear. But they okay, that they that seems a little me. weird that they would thank yeah. you but not be doing yeah. something yeah. themselves. So right? they weren't wearing gloves and they weren't wearing I mean masks, it, 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 at least they would have They're having everybody stand six feet away yeah. and when you're paying for your food you can't put anything on the conveyor belt until the person ahead of you's already paid and walked away. So this is, again, the, generally my prediction is that people weren't going to buy the stay-at-home uh, unnecessarily. Eventually they're going to say, fuck it, we're going to wear masks or we're going to practice appropriate hygiene and we're going to go out. And that's, that's, that's all they're going to be able to enforce. So I'm, I'm still optimistic that after a while here, when the data is untangled, unless they come up with some new threat... They, they, they really are able to fabricate something else or, or something, some other virus thing legitimately arises. Right. Uh, that the most they can do 
is in force. You wear masks, you wear gloves, you stay six feet apart. And there's going to be a sort of casual standard of enforcement of that that is, is going to be tolerable. And that's my sort of reasonable worst case scenario. And that that's kind of what would happen anyway, that government can't resist or can only resist what the market and common sense would lead us to eventually anyway, which is, okay, this is what's happening. We're going to deal with it. All right. So uh, any other comments or should we go to headlines? We've covered so many already. Daniel Revels has a question for you. It says, what was it about the culture of the day that produced the likes of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, etc.? These men not only managed to defeat a king with the world's strongest military, but then fought against there ever being a king in the United States, which their followers asked of them to be by relinquishing the power to set them free. Ooh, big question. That's a half a podcast question. Yeah, Sam, Sam wanted to take a break for a while, apparently, throwing that one at me. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do a, a two-minute answer, I guess. There is a lot of false mythology in that question. And I don't mean to deny the greatness or historical significance of the founders, not the framers who fucked it up with the Constitution, creating a new central authority, but the framers who said, screw you to the king, we're not going to be a part of this anymore, we'll sign the declaration, we'll back it up with, with muskets if we have to, but we will be independent, we will have our freedom. That was, that was pretty huge. The thing about abdicating that power, sort of, there, there is a, you know, a little bit of truth to that, but that's more a mythology of the modern oligopoly, whereas what we had in European monarchies was in all, were, were oligopolies built around a monarchy, built around a, you know, a family and inheritance system of power, but even in those days, it was always an oligopoly. The, the ca calling it a monarchy uh, and, and attributing it to a, the, the power to a single sovereign is really oversimplifying the reality of that power structure was that it was much more of an oligopoly. And as a voluntarist who sees the decline in violence, the general positive trend of decentralization of power, going to say, we don't need a monarch, what was a huge step forward for freedom for humanity towards a, a greater democratization, if you will, or decentralization of power in general. But what we got with the Constitution was a counter-revolution, a coup, and the institution of a new central authority, which was actually an un The Constitution we have today is actually unconstitutional, if, if you believe in constitutionalism in, in the true sense of law of the land as opposed to just whatever the current document is, because it was never legally ratified as per the law of the land prior to that, which was the Articles of Confederation. And in that sense, what we got in America was a new oligopoly centered around a democracy with a better mythology of decentralization of power. And as George Carlin would say, they call it the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. They got a big club and you ain't in it. And it's the same club they used to beat you down with and say, you don't get to be a part of this. You know, whatever. I, I can't, I'm not going to try to do the whole George Carlin impersonation, but hopefully you guys know the bit, right? You can look that up. It's a great George Carlin bit. And, um, yeah, it's a big club and, and, and you ain't in it. And I think it, it's progress, but we got uh, a new oligopoly in the United States and, the process of decentralization of power generally continues. What's scary about right now, the coronaphobia crisis, the crisis of fear and statism, is a, a step backwards. It represents a, a great centralization or concentration of wealth and power. It doesn't in any way diminish my hope for the long-term future of humanity, that we will continue to see a decline in violence, a decline in the relevance of the state, a decline in the relevance of coercion, and the eventual establishment of a truly voluntary society. Grandma's watching, so watch your language, by the way. Hi, Grandma. All right. Um, Whoops, too late. She just tuned in. Hi, Grandma. Oh, oh yeah, don't go watch the, uh, the, the earlier part then, no. Grandma. Thank you. Yeah. I thought she might like me reminding you that. Um... 
Do you want to start with the headlines now? Yeah, let's do it. Unless you have any other burning comments, let's go to the headlines. No, just everybody mentioning how they can see you squirming for relief because you're poor butt. Yeah, yeah. Sit, try to sit funny in the car, trying to lean in the shot. All right, I'll just, I'll just lean back like this, just act like I'm comfortable. Pretend like I'm comfortable even when I'm Cole not. says to make sure you're not sitting on your wallet. No, it's Oh, no. Okay. I never do that. Okay. <laughs> I've seen that episode of Seinfeld. I know better. That's an old reference. Oh, yeah. I've never watched Seinfeld. Seinfeld is timeless. Hey, if you're, if you're in a home isolation right now and you want, like, a cool cultural window, this is funny because my grandma was totally in a Seinfeld, and I was like, oh, it's my grandma's show. I'm not going to watch that. And then I started to watch, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And I get it that it's a super broad appeal, but it is genuinely hard-hitting, positive adult humor, and uh, it is, it's is—it's it's really good. If you want, like, go go download a random season of Seinfeld. Uh, I think everybody should should watch that, get that cultural window, I mean, if you have the time. You yeah. probably you should have better things to do with your time. But right, yeah. I like Friends. Better. I will forever be making South Park and and Seinfeld references. Oh, yeah. um, so the first headline I want to get to is nitric oxide is one of four potential new coronavirus drugs now being tested. This is starting in Massachusetts. Uh, the drug is known to relax blood vessels that could help coronavirus patients with severely damaged lungs and will be tested at Massachusetts General Hospital. See, I do want to say I have I have one uh, minor conspiracy theory in you? all of this that no I no way. Yeah, you know, I, I think there is a I think there is a deliberate conspiracy to obscure the data around treatments in particular and to delay treatment in order to allow government to maintain this period of, of national emergency. Um, I, I think that uh, you're, you're gonna have a, uh, a, a just general inclination. And I don't, this, by minor conspiracy here, I don't mean like there's, there's a bunch of dudes sitting around smoking cigars going, hey, we're gonna fuck with the data and make sure we're gonna delay treatments. But like, again, to the interview with Mary Ruert, uh, she pointed out that because of the 1962 modifications in the FDA law at the federal level, the average time for drug approval went from four years to 14 years. Imagine them slowing down just the data so that it, whatever is the, the most practical treatment, whether, and, and, and what I'm hearing is, you know, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting any, any you know, if, if you're experiencing coronavirus or know someone who is do more research than what I'm saying right here but what I've what I've been getting sort of rumors of is, is high dosage intravenous vitamin C and and nitrous oxide and uh, what what was the other one um, was it, it was another gas treatment but there have been a few treatments that we've seen have at least been promising and we should be because they are they are reasonably safe they are things that would not aggravate someone's condition with the virus uh, of course trump talking about chloroquine even i think he's yeah. just setting himself up there for an i told you so um where he knows that his his administration is going to slow it down and make it and he's going to say look i was fighting the swamp you know, and I was trying to get chloroquine out there. I don't think chloroquine is going to be the best treatment. It could be. But the fact that we don't know, the fact that we don't know, that's what's actually getting people killed. And, and it's, it's not a lot, but at the margins, people who, who if they had access to these treatments, uh, it might be recovering instead of dying from the virus. If we just knew what best practices out there were having some kind of positive effect. Uh, and it's, it is a really, I, I, a, a sick... I say little conspiracy, as in I think it's a casual conspiracy. It's more a conspiracy of factors and, and, and agencies working together rather than like a singular plan. Yeah, we're doing this kind of thing. Kind of conspiracy. All right, what's, what else? Uh, Bernie Sanders is officially dropped out. Suspended or, or dropped out? Officially well, dropped out. Okay, well, I guess I'm assuming that's suspended, but yeah. Well, Chris Cole that, asked, now that Bernie has dropped out, uh, are we going to win? What does a candidate who drops out do with all that leftover campaign money? Well, what really, really is the question is, can, can we get Bernie Sanders supporters on board with localization? Yeah. And, and, and I, think, I think we can. I think uh, I see a big silver lining in the Bernie Sanders movement, not because it's towards democratic socialism, 
but it's towards greater overall political conscientiousness. Bernie Sanders supporters are aware. They are questioning the mainstream narrative. They are skeptical. They are informed. They are driven by compassion and a genuine desire to make the world a better place. And they are looking at radically reforming the system. And I mean radical in the best positive sense of the word of striking at the root of the problem like Henry David Thoreau said as I talk about in this campaign for every thousand striking at the branches of evil there is one striking at the root and I give Bernie Sanders uh, well maybe not Bernie Sanders himself but at least his supporters credit uh, a lot of them for falling into that category uh, of looking to strike the root and I think most Bernie Sanders supporters can get on board with localization and say, well, even if I want democratic socialism, I would like it to be transparent. I would like it to be customized to my community. Even for people who are Bernie Sanders supporters who are democratic socialists who say, well, for the kind of socialism I want to work, there has to be a certain amount of scale. Okay, well, we're going to get rid of the federal government and we're going to let states be sovereign. And my vision is that we get them all the way down to the community level, which is, you know, county, then city, and even more local. But say the state of Vermont says, no, we want to stay the state of Vermont. You know, if someone on the edge of the state wants to break off and be sovereign, now we'll let them go. But we want to stay as the state of Vermont because we want our Bernie Sanders style socialism. Nobody here really objects. There's no independence movement. Cool. Everybody gets more of what they want. And, you know, you have to accept that if people want to live in a more right-wing kind of society, that, that they have the ability to do that and they're now independent states. But at least then you're not forced through the federal system into having Donald Trump as your president. And I would say the same thing to, to Trump supporters. So I think at this point, uh, while he could still say he could shoot someone walking down Fifth Avenue in broad daylight and not lose a vote, uh, I, I think that's kind of wearing thin at this point. And if you can say, look, even with Donald Trump as president, what has he really been able to accomplish in four years? And especially now with the coronavirus and his response exposing his true fascist nature. And I mean fascist in the most direct, <laughs> simplest, uh, uh, literal use of the word of the merging of corporations and state with this round of bailout saying restaurants are going to come back but with different ownership saying that the state is uh, that the federal government is going to buy up uh, stock of companies and take ownership and 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 and, and you know uh, a, a managerial role in them it is direct bare fascism and i don't think it's a new phenomena of the united states federal government or of government in general but it is ratcheted up under the corona crisis and very much laid bare in Trump's direct policy. The next headline is the World Health Organization official says we may have to enter homes and remove family members. Yeah, that was something else. Uh, again, I think they're testing the waters. I think this is an important yeah. time for us to stand up. And I, again, please share these videos. If you're watching right now, if you're watching this live, share this, bring people in. Check out the text, the We Are Not Afraid text. You know, just building that awareness, showing government that even with this specter of fear raised, there, there's going to be pushback. They can't get away with just whatever they want and, and not expect consequences. Um, what's, the, what's the expression, expect resistance? What? There's some rhyme of activism where it's like... Um, respect existence or expect resistance you know that's that's kind of where we're at right now that, that's got to be the message to government like respect humans being humans respect us dealing with the health crisis in a way that we're capable of for those just tuning in the link in the description up there you've got my email if you want to send me an email about anything if you want me to read it on the show if you want uh if you want a dome from big igloo geodesics uh, but also, you have the link to our Patreon. We would appreciate all the Patreon subscriptions we can get right now. Eventually, the goal is to hire a producer, take this show to the next level, be able to do live with comments maybe off of Facebook, excuse me, and, and build a studio out at the Garden of Freedom or a trailer studio, something of that nature. But that other link up there sitting there by itself, 
the soberstick.com that is where we got our COVID-19 test that I got to do yesterday. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch me doing it live, screwing it up, but pulling it off and testing fully negative for both active uh, COVID-19 virus and for antibodies. So go check out that video wherever you can below on my Facebook feed. What's next, baby? I'm trying to find some... Uh, headlines that we haven't already covered in the last couple of weeks, but it's getting pretty tricky. Well, hold on, what is this? Fuel demand? Fuel demand crash shuts U.S. ethanol plants. Meat packers lack refrigerant. All right, so here we're seeing the the cracks in the economy that 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 we predicted that we've yeah. you know not not that we were the only ones, but that you know a lot of us have been trying to call attention to over. Uh, th this this whole period of the state of emergency saying like, yeah, you can look at the immediate effects, but the ripple effects are going to be huge. So what does it mean when meat packing plants can't get refrigerant because of fluctuations in the ethanol market? And you go, ah, shit, a butterfly in Japan flaps, it, flaps its wings and the stock market in the United States crashes, although maybe it would be better to say now, a bat in Wuhan flaps its wings and flies into a Chinese omnivore's mouth <laughs> and a pandemic is started and yeah that's that's the that's that the bad the effect as effect? opposed to the butterfly. It's the, it's effect. the bat it's the bat, the, bat the Wuhan bat effect. I don't you know it's that's all speculation, isn't it? I thought that that was debunked. That it came from Wuhan entirely? The, no, that, that it was debunked? from eating a bat. I thought that that was like a myth that was busted or something like that. Well, I, isn't it true? And again, if anybody here wants to correct me if I'm wrong on the, the biology of this, <laughs> but that once a, a virus is identified, like you can only guess where it came from. Right. You, can, you couldn't ever decisively prove it because hypothetically... Unless you got the animal and tested the animal and found the virus in the animal that was the like the, the one that was in contact rabies. with the first like human case, the head off right? They, you can't, right? And that, but in, at this point, you couldn't do that with Corona, right? And the reason that you couldn't prove any individual source is that this virus is normal enough that hypothetically it could be a variation of a normal flu virus that it could have come up in, in some seasonal fluctuation, right? And, I, you know, hearing the, you know, government side, it's kind of funny to watch, you know, our parents fighting, the Chinese government saying it was the American military and the American government saying, you know, with, with Trump at least saying it came from China. And even then, you couldn't say that, it, you know, it wasn't released in the U.S. or, like, it's just, it, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, if everything I believe I know now about this virus and viruses in general is true that you couldn't pin an origin on this and all the origin theories on this are just theories and it's part of the swirl of propaganda and the fear mongering and you know be afraid of China so we spend more money on the military and this is the headline that we covered a week ago the US Marine Corps retooling from operations in the Middle East to operations in the Pacific, specifically getting ready for missions against China. And you go, uh, uh, they, they better not be getting away with this. Like, I, there's no, I, I just, I mean, of course, for the, them, they'd rather get away with, with, with a real war, but they'll settle for getting away with tons of military spending unnecessarily and ripping us off with that. So if they can spend the money on a whole new set of equipment and justify, you know, a whole new, like they're, they're um, discontinuing certain tanks uh, in, in the Marines right now. And I assume soon artillery and, and things like that in order to focus to more uh, amphibious based assaults as per the uh, wonderful World War II legends. Sean M. Fletcher goes, I hope it's not from eating a bat. Vegans already have enough to lord over us. Right? Yeah, we sure do, huh? Shut Stop up. eating animals. It's, it's gross. Like you're, you're, this, It's funny. This came up on the Drunken Disorderly podcast yesterday. I wasn't Ugh. expecting to be defending my veganishism, But I would just say for eating meat, like, if you know that 
you need animal protein, and you don't, by the way, but if, if it's convenient for you or you're more comfortable physiologically with your body getting animal protein, well, you can get it from eggs. And if you can get Do it from not eggs and dairy, turn this into a vegan. This is vegetarian. Breach. This is vegetarian. But you're you're you're, vegetarian you're killing an animal for pleasure. It. There's no and I'm I'm not I don't lure Where's it over. Where's all my snake eaters yeah, at? This is yeah. So and I've eaten I I've eaten snakes and eels and and I'm I'm not against eating it. I'm just against killing animals needlessly. If an animal dies anyway or is gonna die, you know, uh, there's different degrees of, you know, what is cruelty or exploitation, but. Why kill an animal for pleasure if you don't have to? You know, it's just because it's, it's for simple pleasure. Thing. Yeah, you don't have. So why kill an animal for pleasure if you don't? Because have I to? like steak. Yeah, I don't like killing Opposites animals for pleasure. Opposites attract, obviously. Yeah, right. But I'm not giving up my steak. So any any more headlines we want to cover, dear? Uh, yeah. Let's get to this one. Coronavirus lockdowns have sent pollution plummeting. Environmentalists worry about what comes next. The decline in carbon emissions that has resulted from coronavirus lockdowns could easily be reversed by efforts to quickly ramp up economies. They're worried about a whiplash pollution effect? Yeah. They're not just celebrating that pollution is Right. Down. They're we're not no, just happy is... that there's dolphins back in the Venice Canal or that, you know, like, everything that's happening. They're worried about I think they're worried about crying. being out of a job. Like, they, they, <laughs> they, that if carbon... Okay, so, one of the positive effects of all of this... Is the, yeah, it's the picture the, of how clear Los right. Angeles but is. It's, but it's not, longer term, it's the general leap to telecommuting and telepresencing everything that we practically can right now. And that is a sort of lagging uh, application of a technology that is going to make things overall in the entire economy a whole lot more efficient. And one of the most obvious ways is in fuel consumption and creation of pollution just from driving. And, you know, I hope that we are still able to drive and and of course w with some better form of energy something cleaner and more sustainable right. and more efficient more just resource efficient i'd like to see the transition to solar and wind obviously and or, or nuclear or some safe nuclear power is the you know ultimate transition because fossil fuels has a cost and you know you can do the cost benefit analysis and it's generally worth it but obviously at some point uh, if we can avoid the cost we should and the transition is being delayed. If you haven't seen Who Killed the Electric Car, that's better than watching Seinfeld. Go watch the documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car. Uh, absolutely serious about that. To understand that, that if it wasn't for government, we would have electric cars by now as the norm. Now, is it fire, you know, the, the electricity from sustainable or from coal burning or whatever the fuck? Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of different factors in this. But the general trend to not commuting it's like Kyle Kinane says, we're all in this backwards race. No, it's not Kyle Kinane, some other comedian. You're all in this backwards race. Just to see who to get, we can get to shit your job faster. It's Chris Porter. Chris Porter, yeah, thank yeah. you. All right, any other uh, comments? There's on, been, on the... I've noticed on some, because I have my news set to Los Angeles and Ventura, which is where I'm from, and I've seen a lot of stabbings lately in Los Angeles and Ventura. Uh, I don't know whether it's linked to this or not. Uh, corona, let's see, here's one on the Daily Dot posted 20 hours ago. Coronavirus conspiracy theorists think they found proof in this government webpage. Do you want to check that out, honey? What? This just popped up on my phone. Oh, okay, no, this is... I was <laughs> misinterpreting the site's information to downplay COVID-19. There, there's a real information war going on right yes. here. And I think, I think the truth wins. I, I mean, I think the, just the fact, like how much they have screwed up already in overblowing this thing. The, the, and then I'm, I'm optimistic because, like, unlike 9-11 and Saddam Hussein and Iraq and weapons of mass destruction and all that, we are going to have decisive data about how much the data has been manipulated relatively quickly in the arch of or the, the, the arc of, of this crisis. And so being able to, to, to point that out and say, look, at all these people need to be discredited. That's got to, that, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm really optimistic about that. Does that make sense? You, I yeah. Mean, it, I, yeah, there's going to be a fear lag. Again, one of the things, and, I, and I, I'm going to share a bit of a story here 
uh, that, that we shared a week and a half ago because it's still relevant. It's still going on. And so I want to give a shout out to, to my dad, uh, Charles Kokesh, not just because he is the legendary Kokesh of Kokesh versus the SEC Supreme Court case that he won nine to zero, but because he has been fostering a great conversation among myself and our four siblings around uh, coronaphobia and, and the politics and the virus and understanding the implications. And it's, it's we're, we're like coming together as a family first. Hey, is your, are, are any, is anybody immunocompromised? Is anybody vulnerable? And my, my dad kind of is, he's a little old. He's had, you know, a few relevant health conditions, but he's not slowing down or doing anything differently except avoiding certain contact situations. And it's not a big deal for him. He lives on, uh, on 40 acres in the middle of Wyoming and, and he's, you know, he's got plenty to do outside without, you know, human contact. He can go to these, I don't know what he's doing now for going to the grocery store. Um, but his wife, Sue, she is, uh, she is working limited hours in a government job and um, uh, just practicing social distancing there. And they're, they're completely comfortable with that. And, and they're good where if they, uh, you know, if the shit really hit the fan, they'd be, they'd be comfortable at their homestead for an extended, extended period, if not indefinitely. I think they, they'd be able to transition to, to rent. <laughs> excuse me, rain collection and, uh, and growing their own food. And so we're kind of discussing that situation with my, um, my three brothers and my sister and, and how secure they are in their circumstances. And I'm talking and telling them about how, uh, you know, we're in a pretty good situation, right? Where, uh, if, if we had to go completely independent off grid, uh, we, we would at least be comfortable indefinitely with what we have at, at the garden of freedom and we are very safely removed from government, from law enforcement. We are, uh, you can't find us from our Google, uh, from our address with Google Maps. It sends you somewhere else. Uh, the address isn't public anyway. Uh, there's no, nobody wanders up to our property by mistake. Our road is marked, our, our road specifically, the road that I built as a private road. And uh, so, so we're, we're very comfortable that way. But what's cool about this is that my dad and I were in the category of the skeptics. And when we talked about this on the show, I think it was a week and a half ago, we, we said, you know, it, it, depending on how you want to count it, it's about 10% to 25% of the population that are naturally skeptical, that sees what's happening and goes, yeah, this is mostly bullshit. Okay, yeah, we got to figure this out. And then we got, we got to talk to all the normies. And this is just part of a consequence of the way that this conversation is happening in the age of the internet, where those of us who are skeptics are, uh, the circumstance kind of force us to have the conversation with the non-skeptics. And the narrative is playing out very, very well for us. Totally in our favor, because we, we, we go, the conversation starts with, hey, have you heard about this corona thing? And this is me calling my mom three weeks ago going, Hey, you're on an Island. You know, are you guys cool? And then it's easy for them. Everybody there is aware that there have a lot of, uh, of older retired folk out there in, in the San Juan islands. And, uh, you know, they have a ferry that goes every day in and out of Seattle, which is a hot spot, but they're, they're not worried about it at all out there. They're safe. They have uh, you know, decent ability to live independently. Uh, if they, if, if their grid fails, they'll be okay out there for a while. Uh, they got a good garden actually. And they are those, my mom is pretty skeptic. Um, I think George, my stepdad is as well. But what was really interesting to see is that, uh, them not so much, but my, my, some of my, my brothers and my sister less so skeptical. And because we're forced to come together and have this conversation like, Hey, first, excuse me, first, have you heard of this? What are you doing about it? Let's analyze this from our practical. So we know how to respond both to the economy or to, oh, I guess all three to the virus, to the economy and to the government. Obviously the economy is partly due to the virus, a little bit due to the virus, but mostly due to the government intervention and having to analyze those things. What we are showing people is the, the, the superiority of our worldview in immediate practical terms that if you say, well, I'm going to believe whatever government tells me and do whatever they say. First of all, you're going to be confused because government is going to give you mixed messages. Like right off the bat, they screwed that up and gave us this 
huge wide opening to say, look, the, the, the question in government is essential just to understanding the world. And in all the ways that they have put our lives at risk unnecessarily, or uh, you know, in, in every facet of this crisis, being able to prove that in an obvious, undeniable way where, uh, yeah, a lot of facts are being manipulated, but a, a lot of them also are, are sort of indisputable, especially where they will be as we get more data coming out about this. The fact that people in general are asking the question, is the cure worse than the disease? And that we will be able to answer that question decisively within a few months here. That's that's really exciting. That's a good positive moment coming. So the reason I say all of this is that I want everybody who's watching, please share these videos, bring people into this conversation, the cool, calm, collected adults in the room here saying, look, we can deal with this rationally. We can keep our heads. We can deal with this in a way that doesn't make the cure worse than the disease. As individuals, we can understand this better and 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 deal with this. We can capitalize on the situation to what we can to what extent we can. We can we can protect other people who are vulnerable. We can uh, you know direct resources in a, in a more appropriate way than would happen otherwise. So please have those conversations with people around you. Don't be afraid to share your skepticism. This is a perfect opportunity. I got something really interesting from Chris Cole. Thank you, sweetie. Um, it says South. Uh, I think it's supposed to say Carolina South Governor. Yeah, I think. South Carolina governor, that's where he is. Yeah, yeah, okay. So South Carolina Governor Christy Noem outlines the role of government in a crisis situation. Noem states, my role with respect to public safety is something I take very seriously, but it's the people themselves who are primarily responsible for their safety. They are the ones entrusted with expansive freedoms. They are free to exercise their rights to work, worship, and play, or to stay at home, or to conduct social distancing. The calls to apply a one-size-fits-all approach to this problem in South Dakota is herd mentality, not leadership. Oh, okay, South Dakota. Great. Okay. My responsibility is to respect the rights of the people who elected me and to manage our state operations in a way that reflects the realities of what we have here on the ground. On the foundation of my principles, common sense, conservative values, and the principles we hold dear in America, the facts, the science, and the data will guide our decision-making here in South Dakota. That's great. I think that is the best yeah. press release I've ever heard from a like. Yeah. I hope it's not total hot air. I hope I hope I hope uh, they back that up with policy. But I do too. I, it's it's but definitely I think worth. That, that is the best press release yes. I have read when it comes to how people supposedly in charge are going to be conducting themselves yes absolutely it is it is worth pointing out a principled conservative being principled especially when those principles line up with libertarian principles which is occasionally the case and to praise government when they're doing the right thing like we pointed out in australia they didn't close schools and there was some clamor about that and, and and a public official had to stand up and actually point out no this is not going to be worth it even though there's a temptation here and they did and, and we said look this is government doing the right thing or or someone in government doing the right thing or government taking on the correct policy in the situation there's nothing wrong with, with praising that so any other comments uh, or questions in the chat before we, we wrap no, this up I there? think it's a good time to wrap up for everybody interested in the freedom logo merchandise Please go to www.thefreedomline.com or you can email Adam or myself, Adam at thefreedomline.com or Samantha at thefreedomline.com. Email's in the description, link is there. Please support us on Patreon. Share these videos. If you want that coronavirus COVID-19 test kit, it should be available within about 24 hours here at that link, thesoberstick.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Mwah from Flagstaff, Arizona. Peace and love, y'all.